Wow. Another beautiful place. All right. So just admitting folks as they show up here, just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Um, so what we're going to do, I know, isn't that cool, Gail? Um, people from everywhere here. So what we're going to do is I've gotten some nice questions, uh, a, a couple that I think will be useful to everyone. So I'm going to start off with those. Thank you guys for, um, for, for putting those questions, um, on the form that I sent out on my email list. Um, and by the way, if you haven't, uh, joined my email list, here is my website, lauracoilcreative.com. And at the bottom of the website, there's a way, uh, you know, a, a link to get to um, on my email list. And then I let everybody know um, about uh, webinars when they come up. And then also um, this will be posted in Sneak Peeks. So um, if you're not already enrolled in Sneak Peeks, let me give you um, that link. All right. So the next question that I got, uh, which I thought would be, um, interesting and helpful to people. This one is from Sandy. Who's in Australia. Hi, Sandy. I'm so glad you're here. Um, all right. So what she was, uh, what she was seeing is that, um, you know, let's say I've got my white arrow here and she has these sort of floral motifs, these abstract motifs here. And if I, um, just marquee, over them, you can see that every one of these corner points has a corner widget on it. So these are the live corner, corner widgets that allow you to round all of your corners like that. Or you can round them one at a time. But she was wondering, why is it that here I've got live corners that I can work with, but over here I don't, or at least there's two of them, and then the rest of them are not don't have live corners when clearly, you know, these look like corner points. I mean, they're, you know, two curves are coming together, uh, right there. So it's gotta be a corner point. Um, so it took me a minute, but I sort of, uh, I, I found a solution for this and, um, and I can tell you what the issue is first of all. So let me go ahead and go down here to where I've copied one of the motifs, the one that only has two, active corner widgets. So um, there is a setting in, let me go into preferences. I'm using the shortcut command or control K. Um, and if we go into selection and anchor display, there is a, you can, um, there's, a, there's one preference here, hide corner widget for angles greater than 177. So you actually can choose, you know, how big of an angle you want to allow to have a, um, a corner point. So if you're thinking, you know, I mean, that is a really open angle here. And so you can adjust that preference right here. So this is almost a 180 degree angle and we will see a corner point there. Obviously the, the, um, but there's no setting for anything else. And, and so what I think is happening here is that all of these are so steep they're so steep, in fact, that they're like a zero degree corner. So if I go into outline mode here, and actually, before I do that, let me go back to preferences because there's something I want to show you here. And this is in preferences again, Commander Control K. Um, this is one of the preferences I really like under selection and anchor display again. Let's do show handles when multiple anchors are selected. So I think this is a really good preference to have on if you're trying to sort of uh, work with the pen tool, diagnose your curves and that sort of thing. It's helpful to be able to see all of them at once. And what we can see here when I select on all of these is that every um, corner point here, it looks like it has one handle, but if I drag it away, it's got two. So, um, before we get to this, you know, if I zoom way in here, what we're seeing is almost a zero uh, angle. This is almost completely shut here. Whereas over here where we have, you know, a corner widget, there is just a little bit more opening there. So what's happening is that I'm not sure how you drew this, Sandy, but there is literally no space between these handles. And when I open them up, 
you know, a little bit, let me pull this one in the, actually in the right direction. Then you can see a corner widget appears. Um, so she has artwork here that has this kind of condition um, everywhere. And so I was trying to find, um, you know, what would be sort of a way to do to fix these overall without going in here and having to move every single um, corner, uh, every single handle here. So I have a solution for that, first of all. And second of all, um, I also wanted to just uh, talk about maybe a different way to, to draw this really quickly. Let me make sure I, I'm checking on the, um, the chat box here. Let's see. Oh, Lucy's here from Barbados. Great. I'm so glad you made it. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, yes. So Gail, this is going to be on, this recording will be on my sneak peeks class. And I'm also going to put an excerpt on YouTube. Um, Sandy got them using pucker and bloat. Okay, cool. I thought that might've, that could have been it. So pucker and bloat is a, um, an effect and you can apply it in the appearance panel. So if she started out perhaps with a circle with a bunch of anchor points on it, um, pucker and bloat would just blow, you know, use those anchor points and then just sort of blow out these kind of shapes like that. All right. So, uh, if you were drawing this by hand, you might want to instead place a, you know, a point, an anchor point on a tangent like this so that you don't have super, super, super long handles like that, which are hard to control. And, uh, this sort of, you know, um, Placing tangent, uh, you know, just a point right there on the curve tangent gives you a more manageable curve that you can work with. All right. So that might be one way to do it if you were working um, by hand. That would probably be the better way to draw than have super, super long um, handles. But let's talk about a way of fixing this. Let me get another copy here bring it down. I'm just option dragging that copy out here and I'm going to look at this. And, um, so I thought, you know, astute graphics must have a, a plugin that works for this. And so what I'm going to do is open up, I've got a, a toolbar here, an advanced toolbar. All right. And this is, uh, the plugin that astute graphics makes, um, called the Pathscribe tool. And this is really um, a bunch of functions that help you with vector art like this. So let me move this toolbar over here. I'm using the Path, Pathscribe tool and I'm going to first, you know, I've got all of those anchor points selected. So that's the first thing that you want to do. You want to select all of those anchor points and then you can go here into the uh, options menu and uh, you can select all the handles of the selected points, or you can select the in handles or the out handles. So in this case, it doesn't matter to me whether you choose in or out. It's just, you know, the, there's two handles on each one of those points. So we just only want to select one handle from every point. So I'm going to choose that option there. And then I can see those handles are selected. And then you have the option here to make edits to those handles or to that selected point. And in this case, um, I'm going to use rotate. So I'm just going to rotate that handle by one degree just by clicking one, two, I don't know if I have to do this, maybe three times. Let's see. So now we can see there's some separation between those curve handles. And if I go ahead and I get my white arrow and select those points, now I see um, those corner widgets and these can all be rounded like that. So I don't know if you have the, um, if you have the plugin Sandy, but if you do, there's your, that's an easier way of, of dealing with it rather than going in and having to move every single one. That's just the kind of solution that you can get from those astute graphics plugins. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Christina says, uh, I've noticed sometimes the corners are pointed, sometimes they're flat. Is this happening for the same reason? Okay, I'm so glad you asked that because I did want to talk about that as well. So I'm going to talk about that next. Teresa says, where is the info repeated? Um, 
Teresa, it's here on my, we will uh, take this uh, webinar and it will be, um, part of it will be posted on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Laura Coyle. And then we have my sneak peeks class here, which is on my teachable uh, website. So that's where um, sneak peeks is a free class where I post the webinars. All right. So let's talk about what Christina asked, because this is a this is also a really good question, and there's an important distinction here, okay? So um, what we're looking at with Sandy's artwork here is that, you know, if you look at this one here that has all live corners, if I go into, um, you know, live corners is the way of rounding all the corners. They also have different corner types, like a chomford corner that's sort of just um, sheared off at an angle. Um, so those are... Uh, uh, special types of corners, but just the general stroke settings that have already been around forever that are here in the stroke panel, you can choose what kind of corners you want. So right now, this is a miter join. So you can see it just comes to that 90 degree, um, or at least it just comes to a point there. Um, this is the round join. So if I go ahead and click on this, you'll see all of these corners get rounded. And that's not a uh, that's not the corner widget doing that. That is the stroke setting doing that. Notice if I if I go and undo that, all right, and I round these, okay, to get what looks like a similar effect. But if I go into outlines mode, commander control Y, you can see there's an extra segment there. So Illustrator, where there was one point, creates two anchor points and puts a rounded segment between them. So that's what the live corners feature um, does and it's controlled by those widgets there. Let me undo this. We're going back to that single corner anchor point, and then uh, I can just make a rounded appearance in the stroke there just by changing that to the round join. And I can make this thicker, thinner, like that. It's still a corner point though. Um, and then bevel join right here is that flattened off. Now, if you, the one other setting that I just wanted to mention is let's say you choose this miter corner here. Well, um, we're seeing different lengths. Uh, the points have different lengths. Some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. This is all controlled by um, the angle that those uh, handles are working at. And then also what the miter limit is here. So this miter limit is basically 10 points. It's saying that um, if this corner right here, if this little point, um, which the angle, you know, when it comes to a point, that's how long it has to be. Um, it, it will not go any more than 10 points away from this anchor point. So you can see this one is a, this one is a, um, a wider angle there and see how the miter gets shorter, it gets longer, and then it stops. So once it gets to 10 points, that's the limit. And then it goes back to being this kind of sheared off um, blunt corner like that. So that's what the miter limit means. And if you want to have a longer miter limit, if you just said, okay, I want this to be 50, then let's see, some of these will get really long. I don't know. Maybe I have to go do something crazy. I don't know if any of these would be that long. Um, well, actually, they're not, none of them are are uh, are limited. But the the closer I move these handles together, you know, the longer those get. So I hope that just sort of explains the whole thing. There's a difference between the stroke appearance setting that you make in the stroke panel and just the rounding of the corners. All right. So let me look at the chat here. Make sure, and we're we're on track. I'm going to jump over to the demonstration because I really want to talk about this other stuff. Okay. Doesn't change. Yeah, Krista, that's absolutely true. They don't, um, clicking those different options does not always fix the problem. And so it has everything to do with the angle. Is it super, super steep? Is it wide? You know, that kind of thing. All right, so that's Sandy's question. Thank you so much, Sandy. And thank you, Anna, for your question as well.